you. Uh, Dana Bash, you have the next question. A crucial question is how to balance surveillance with privacy and keeping Americans safe. Senator Cruz, you voted for a bill that President Obama signed into law just this past June that made it harder for the government to access Americans' phone records. In light of the San Bernardino attack, was your vote a mistake? Well, Dana, the, the premise of your question is not accurate. I'm very proud to have joined with conservatives in both the Senate and the House to reform how we target bad guys. And, and what the USA Freedom Act did is it did two things. Number one, it ended the federal government's bulk collection of phone metadata of millions of law-abiding citizens. But number two, and the second half of it that is critical, it strengthened the tools of national security and law enforcement to go after terrorists. It gave us greater tools, and we are seeing those tools work right now in San Bernardino. And in particular, what it did is the prior program only covered a relatively narrow slice of phone calls. When you had a terrorist, you could only search a relatively narrow slice of numbers, primarily landlines. The USA Freedom Act expands that, so now we have cell phones, now we have internet phones, now we have the phones the terrorists are likely to use, and the focus of law enforcement is on targeting the bad guys. You know what the Obama administration keeps getting wrong is whenever anything bad happens, they focus on law-abiding citizens instead of focusing on the bad guys. We need to focus on radical Islamic terrorists, and we need to stop them before they carry out acts of terror. Thank you. Senator Rubio, Senator Cruz is right. There was bipartisan support for that, but you voted against it. So is Senator Cruz wrong? He is, and so are those that voted for it. There were some that voted for it because they wanted to keep it alive, and they were afraid the whole program would expire. Here's the world we live in. This is a radical jihadist group that is increasingly sophisticated in its ability, for example, to radicalize American citizens, in its ability to exploit loopholes in our legal immigration system, in its ability to capture and hold territory in the Middle East, as I outlined earlier, in multiple countries. This is not just the most capable, it is the most sophisticated terror threat we have ever faced. We are now at a time when we need more tools, not less tools. And that tool we lost, the metadata program, was a valuable tool that we no longer have at our disposal. Senator Cruz? Well, I, you know, I would note that, that Marco knows what he's saying isn't true. You know, Mark Levin wrote a column last week that says that the attack ads his super PAC is, is running that are saying the same thing, that they are knowingly false and they are, they are in fact Alinsky-like attacks like Barack Obama. And the reason is simple. What he knows is that the old program covered 20 to 30 percent of phone numbers to search for terrorists. The new program covers nearly 100 percent. That gives us greater ability to stop acts of terrorism, and, and he knows that, that that's the case. Dana, yeah. may I that, that, Senator, Senator, um, Let Senator me be Rubio, very careful respond. in answering this, because I don't think national television in front of 15 million people is the place to discuss classified information. So let me just be very clear. There is nothing that we are allowed to do under this bill that we could not do before. This bill did, however, take away a valuable tool that allowed the, the National Security Agency and other, law, and, and, and other intelligence agencies to quickly and rapidly access phone records and match them up with other phone records to see who terrorists have been calling. Because I promise you, the next time there is attack on, an attack on this country, the first thing people are going to want to know is, why didn't we know about it and why didn't we stop it? And the answer better not be because we didn't have access to records or information that would have allowed us to identify these killers before they attacked Dave, Another this is, this is Senator this is Paul, I know this is... This has been a very big issue for you. You hear many of your colleagues are calling for increased surveillance by law enforcement. You call that hogwash. Why is that hogwash? You know, I think Marco gets it completely wrong here. <laughs> We are not any safer through the bulk collection of all Americans' records. In fact, I think we're less safe. We get so distracted by all of the information, we're not spending enough time getting specific immigration, specific information on terrorists. The other thing is, is the one thing that might have stopped Senator Bernardino, that might have stopped 9-11, would have been stricter controls on those who came here. And Marco has opposed at every point increased security, border security for those who come to our country. On his Gang of Eight bill, he would have liberalized immigration, but he did not, and he steadfastly opposed any new border security requirements for refugees or students. Last week, I introduced another bill saying we need more security, we need more scrutiny. 
Once again, Marco opposed this. So Marco can't have it both ways. He thinks he wants to be this, oh, I'm great and strong on national defense, but he's the weakest of all the candidates on immigration. He is the one for an open border that is leaving us defenseless. If we want to defend the country, we have to defend against who's coming in. And Marco is, has more of an allegiance to Chuck Schumer and to the liberals than he does to conservative policy. <laughs> I want to thank Rand for another 30 seconds because, number one, what he's pointing to is a bill last week that an amendment he voted for that only 10 people voted for. You know why? Because it's not focused on terrorists. It would have banned anyone from coming here. Someone from Taiwan would not have been able to come here as a tourist. Number two, this program, this metadata program, is actually more strict than what a regular law, law enforcement agency has now. If a regular law enforcement agency wants your phone records, all they have to do is issue a subpoena. But now the intelligence agency is not able to quickly gather records and look at them to see who these terrorists are calling. And the terrorist that attacked us in San Bernardino was an American citizen, born and raised in this country. And I bet you we wish we would have had access to five years of his records so we could see who he was working with. Stand before Governor Christie, Governor Christie, you have heard. Dana, Sorry. Dana. Governor Christie, I'll come to you in a minute. Go ahead, in the question, can I respond? Go ahead, please. Marco still misunderstands the immigration issue. What I put forward was an amendment that would have temporarily halted immigration from high-risk terrorist countries, but it would have started it up, but I want them to go through global entry, which is a program where we do background checks. The thing is, is that every terrorist attack we've had since 9-11 has been legal immigration. Marco wants to expand that. I want more rules, more scrutiny, and to defend the country, you have to defend the border. Senator, we're gonna talk about immigration in a while. But Governor then I, Christie, don't I get another 30 seconds? This, he mentioned me again. You, uh, talk, you heard uh, Senator Paul, Senator Cruz talk about how important it is to protect Americans' privacy, even in a time of grave danger. Why? What's wrong with that? Listen, it, I want to talk to the audience at home for a second. If your eyes are glazing over like mine, this is what it's like to be on the floor of the United States Senate. <laughs> I mean, endless debates about how many angels on the head of a pin from people who've never had to make a consequential decision in an executive position. The fact is, for seven years, I had to make these decisions after 9-11. Make a decision about how to proceed forward with an investigation or how to pull back, whether you use certain actionable intelligence or whether not to. And yet they continue to debate about this bill and then the subcommittee and what, nobody in America cares about that. What they care about is, are we gonna have a president who actually knows what they're doing to make these decisions? And for the seven years afterwards, New Jersey was threatened like no other region in this country. And what we did was we took actions within the Constitution to make sure that law enforcement had all the information they needed. We prosecuted two of the biggest terrorism cases in the world and stopped Fort Dix from being attacked by six American radicalized Muslims from a mosque in New Jersey because we worked with the Muslim American community to get intelligence and we used the Patriot Act to get other intelligence to make sure we did those cases. This is the difference between actually having been a federal prosecutor, actually doing something and just spending your life as one of a hundred debating it. Let's talk about how we do this, not about which bill each one of these guys likes more. Thank the American you. people don't care about that. Thank you.